All right, uh, my name is Michael Park. Uh, I'm going to show you guys an experimental pattern matching library I've written in C14. Um, the URL is there so you can take a look. So, this is from the Haskell Wikibooks page. Um, it's a quote from Haskell Wikibooks page. So, it says In pattern matching, we attempt to match values against patterns and, if so desired, bind variables to successful matches. The color coding here for values, patterns, and variables will come up later in the slides, so um, do pay attention to them. So, in a hip language like Rust, we can do pattern matching on simple values, uh, for example, uh, with an x over here, which is an int, and our patterns are in pink here, uh, one, two, three, and a wildcard which matches anything and just drops it. Well, we can do the same thing in C++, right? We can do a switch on x and we can describe our patterns in a case uh, one, two, three, and a default happens to be one of the patterns. Um, we can also do something a little more fancier in Rust where we can alt have an alternation pattern where we can say one or two, um, and we can do the same thing in C++ as long as we formulate our cases correctly. All right, so we get a little fancier. We have some program option, some command line flag, uh, and we want to say we have an optional flag, this may be none, and our patterns are either we have dash f or dash dash force, um, and it's gonna do some, something, and then we have the ver verbose case. If, the other, uh, uh, if we don't know about it, then we're gonna print some unknown flag, and if in the case where it's not specified, we won't, it won't do anything. Well, what do, you do the, what do you do for this case in C++? Well, we can do something like this, where if we can manage to write a const expert hash function for a string, then we can hash them at compile time and throw them into a switch, and then, and then hash, hash, hash the, uh, the optional string during runtime and then switch into the, switch into the function. I don't want to write that hash function. But here's a Python approach of Python switch where you can uh, first check the flag and then you can dereference into the flag and then uh, index into your manually constructed map. There's a bug here. If if you don't know about the flag, then this will throw a bad function call uh, exception. Great, that's not obvious. All right, so the syntax for my library basically looks like this. Uh, you can say match and then sequence of expressions and then you can describe your patterns and the lambda isn't necessary, but I showed it to show, show that the variable bindings show up there. So the previous example could be written like this. We can say, okay, we have some optional string option. We're gonna match that option and say the patterns are the same way we've described them in Rust. We're gonna say any of, which is the bar as before, it's, this is the alternation pattern. Um, and we can say sum to match optionals. Uh, so the, the, this, is, this looks exactly the same. Well, why do I have to say, say, say sum twice? Couldn't I just say sum on the outside and then do any of, in, any of in the inside? And yeah, you can. Except what it turns out is in Rust you can't say this. And I found out about an hour ago and I was kind of Funny, but you can say this. In my, uh, you can say this with, with my library, and that was uh, that was delightful. Okay, <laughs> so here's here's a basic example of factorial. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a few examples of uh, different different patterns that I have. Uh, so the first one is just zero matching an int. Uh, it's an expression pattern which just matches values. Um, the wildcard wildcard pattern is similar to what you've seen before in other languages and in the Rust as well. Um, just there's a recursive factorial. Here's an example of FizzBuzz, where you can iterate from one to 100, and you can make pair on mod three and mod five, and the prod, prod there creates a product pattern, uh, which will match your pa pair tuples. It'll also match structs that have opted in for structured binding requirements, which essentially says tuple size, tuple element, and std get, or not std get, sorry, whatever ADL get you can specify so that we can find it. And well, the pair and the prod is kind of verbose and unnecessary, so you can get rid of those, and this will also work. So here's a Fibonacci example. Um, we have a few more patterns now. The first, the first case is a little bit advanced, so I'll go through it. So we match, we, so we get, again, we match an int. We have arg, which is a bind expression, which says uh, bind is just a placeholder, which can be repeated, but it'll never, uh, it'll just bind, bind values and forward it through to your handler. So here we match some n, any arbitrary n. We're gonna pass it through the handler to the handler as the argument here. And then right here is the pattern guard. So this kind of looks like an, asser uh, an assertion, and that's, that was the intentional uh, syntax for this. So when n is less than zero, this case will continue. If len is, uh, n is not less than zero, then we're gonna fall through to the next case. And this is very powerful. So in this case, we we're gonna have, okay, well, less than zero, uh, or if it's greater than zero, then we're gonna go to the next case, and we're gonna match zero or one. I'll answer questions after. Um, uh, and so in this case, we're gonna return zero or one, and in the, rest, in, the, in, the, in the otherwise case, we match a wildcard and do the recursive uh, case. So this is a fancier example that I'll show. 
So here we have a red black tree node, okay? And we're going to implement a balance function. So we have uh, the members are color, t value, and then we have a shared, uh, shared printer of uh, LHS and RHS, which are our children. And assume that this, this class has been adapted for uh, uh, structured binding. So we, we need to specify uh, tuple size, tuple element, and get. I'm going to omit that, but assume that. And then our, our algorithm looks like this. So this is a node t colon colon balance. So this is a balance function. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try to give arg some names. So rather than just saying arg five times for every case, I'm gonna just say decal type arg, and I'm gonna give it these names: a, b, c, d, x, y, z. A, uh, x, y, z are the values, and a, b, c are our a, a, b, c, d are our branches. So if you have black left uh, black red red, uh, 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 sorry, if you have black red red in the sequence of left 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 right 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 or right left then you can reformulate your node this way uh, so that it, it's balanced to be red, black, black, uh, right and left. And in the nothing case, we just don't do anything. We just leave the node alone, and that's it. And this is, that's, that's all I have for you guys. Um, I'll answer, Alan had a question? No question, no question. No no question. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you.